Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Good morning. I'm Amy Morris. And I'm Karen Moscow. Here are the stories we're following today. Karen, we begin with the race for the White House and the growing pressure on President Biden to step away from the campaign. Axios reports Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is privately signaling his concerns to donors, indicating that he may be open to replacing Biden as the Democrats' nominee. Senator Peter Welch of Vermont is the first Democratic senator to call for Biden to exit the race. Welch wrote in a Washington Post op-ed, that while he has great respect for President Biden, it's time for him to step out of the race for the good of the country. This after former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi told MSNBC that only Biden could make that decision, but that the clock is ticking. Uh, we're all encouraging him uh, to, to make that decision uh, because time is running short. Top officials from the campaign are set to meet Senate party members today. And now, Amy, it appears Hollywood has turned on Biden. Heavy hitters, including Netflix chairman Reed Hastings, super agent Ari Emanuel, heiress Abigail Disney, and author Stephen King have joined the chorus calling on Biden to drop his re-election bid. Actor and lifelong Democrat George Clooney weighed in with an opinion piece in The New York Times saying, quote, the dam has broken after he helped raise $30 million for Biden's re-election campaign last month. Actor and director Rob Ryan Reiner chimed in on X, saying that democracy faces an ex- existential threat and Democrats need someone younger on the ticket to fight back. We get insight from Henrietta Trays, a managing partner at Veda Partners. The rank and file Democrats across the country, independents, moderates, and particularly female voters, have said repeatedly all year long they do not want another term for Joe Biden. They do not believe that he is up to the task. And it's been the elites who have said, you know what, we're going to stick with this guy. The senators are behind him, the House members are behind him. And now both tides are shifting. And I'm really just watching which senators, you know, from an office or a, a chamber where Biden operated for 36 years is going to make the decision to say, hey, you know what, thank you so much for your service. It's time to move on. Henrietta Trays at Veda Partners thinks a final decision will be made on Biden in the next week. As for the presumptive Republican presidential nominee, Donald Trump is scheduled to speak at a Bitcoin conference later this month. Event organizer BTC Media says Trump will deliver the speech on July 27th on the main stage of the Bitcoin 2024 event in Nashville. The former president has increasingly highlighted Bitcoin on his campaign trail. Well, Amy, the NATO summit wraps up in Washington today. Last night, leaders used their strongest ever language to criticize China's military support for Russia in the Ukraine war. They called Beijing a decisive enabler that poses systemic challenges to Euro-Atlantic security. We get more from Bloomberg managing editor Ben Sills. This is pretty much in line with what we heard from the G7 in Italy last month. I think it reflects the fact that the intelligence that the West and allies are getting now and exactly the way Chinese um, suppliers are helping to equip the Russian war machine. I think that intelligence has become a lot clearer, a lot firmer, and as a result, the allies are becoming much more direct in their criticism of Beijing. Bloomberg's Ben Sills reports that a Chinese embassy spokesperson said China does not provide weapons to the parties in the conflict. Let's turn now to the markets. Another day, another record for stocks. In fact, the world's biggest tech companies fueled the S&P 500 above 5,600 for the first time ever. Amy Wu Silverman is head of derivative strategy at RBC Capital Markets. Historically, if you had said to an investor, look, we're at all-time highs, this, this one secular theme is driving everything, and your cost of protection is at historical lows, that would certainly be compelling reasons to hedge. But what we're also not seeing is a lot of hedging. You know, so investors not only are not diversified in what they have in the market, they're also not using protection either. Capital Markets' Amy Wu Silverman notes the S&P 500 rose for a seventh straight day to notch its 37th record this year. Well, Amy, the big event for markets comes later this morning, the release of a key inflation report. Economists are forecasting the core CPI to rise two-tenths of a percent in June for a second month. That would mark the smallest back-to-back gain since August. Federal Reserve Governor Lisa Cook predicts inflation will cool with little damage to the labor market. My baseline forecast, and that of many outside observers, is that inflation will continue to move toward target over time without much further rise in unemployment. 
Federal Reserve Governor Lisa Cook made the comments in Australia this morning. Swaps are pricing in two Fed cuts this year, with a strong chance of the first coming in September. The economy is also in focus overseas. In fact, the U.K. economy grew at double the pace expected in the month of May. GDP expanded by four-tenths of a percent for the month. The economy was boosted by stronger-than-expected performance in construction and services. Well, another news this morning, Amy, Arkego's capital management founder, Bill Huang, has been found guilty of fraud and market manipulation. We get the details from Bloomberg Law host June Grosso. A jury found Archegos Capital Management founder Bill Huang guilty of 10 criminal counts stemming from his firm's 2021 collapse, concluding a two-month trial that captivated Wall Street. Huang was convicted of securities and market manipulation fraud in a scheme that prosecutors say cost global investment banks billions of dollars. He'll be sentenced on October 28th. In New York, June Grosso, Bloomberg Radio. Thank you, June. And in company news, Citigroup gets fined. The bank will pay $136 million to U.S. bank regulators over issues related to data quality management and risk controls. The Federal Reserve says the fines stem from back-to-back regulatory actions in October of 2020. Well, Amy, Apple's biggest new product in years is not expected to shake off its slow sales start until the release of a cheaper model next year. According to market tracker IDC, the $3,500 Vision Pro mixed reality headset has yet to sell 100,000 units in a quarter since its launch in the U.S. in February. The IDC also says Apple faces a 75% drop in domestic sales in the current quarter, and we are getting this headline crossing the Bloomberg on Apple. It's settled its EU antitrust probe over tap and pay technology. And we have a time now for a look at some of the other stories making news in New York and around the world. For that, we're joined by Bloomberg's Michael Barr. Michael, good morning. Good morning, Karen. Democratic Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has filed separate articles of impeachment against Supreme Court Justices Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito. The separate articles refer to conflicts of interest. Ocasio-Cortez says Thomas and Alito should have disclosed gifts from individuals with business before the court. And she says they have failed to recuse themselves from cases where they or family members have ties which, quote, would be worthy of standard removal in any lower court. The Constitution rightfully and explicitly holds justices to even higher standards than members of Congress or even the president. The articles are not expected to advance in the Republican-controlled House. Closing arguments will extend into a fourth day in the corruption trial of Senator Bob Menendez. Yesterday, a lawyer for the New Jersey Democrat told a federal jury in Manhattan that it would be a win for this country if it rejects the government's bribery case against his client. Attorney Adam Fee told the jury, this case, it dies here today. Prosecutors say Menendez and his wife used his political influence to benefit foreign governments and assisted three New Jersey businessmen in return for bribes. Testimony resumed today in Alec Baldwin's involuntary manslaughter trial. Baldwin is charged in the death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins, who was killed during a rehearsal on the set of Rust when prosecutors say Baldwin fired a prop gun loaded with live ammunition. Prosecutor Alinda Johnson questioned crime scene technician Marissa Popple, who was part of the investigation into the shooting, and found live bullets at the movie set. How many rounds... Altogether, did you discover that you thought were suspected live rounds on, on the set of Rust? Uh, five and the spent casing, so six in total. Prosecutors argued Baldwin behaved recklessly. Baldwin's lawyer calling the deadly shooting a tragic accident, but arguing that Baldwin did not commit a crime, saying the actor never pulled the trigger. The current stretch of historic heat is doing more than just smashing records in the U.S. It is resulting in more Americans getting infected with dengue fever. States as far north as New York are now seeing cases of the tropical disease. Nearly 200 infections now confirmed in New York and New Jersey alone, usually spread by infected mosquitoes. Global News 24 hours a day and whenever you want it. With Bloomberg News Now, I'm Michael Barr and this is Bloomberg. Karen. All right, Michael Barr, thank you.
time now for the Bloomberg Sports Update with John Stashauer. John, good morning. Good morning, Karen. As the All-Star break approaches, the Mets find themselves over 500, very much in the race for a wild-card playoff spot since June 2nd. The Mets are 22-10, and 10, beat the Nationals at City Field 6-2, won it with a four-run sixth inning that included a Jose Iglesias two-run single. The Mets rookie manager, Carlos Mendoza. We know where we at, you know, but still July. Uh, and I think the mindset here is, you know, take care one day at a time, you know, take care of business today, take care of business uh, winning series uh, and let the team play out. You know, um, let's continue to prepare. Let's continue to go out there and compete. Let's continue to have fun. And that's what they're doing. Meanwhile, the Yankees, a 2-1 win at Tampa Bay. Thanks to the bullpen, four relievers, Tim Hill, Luke Weaver, Tommy Canely, Clay Holmes combined for four and two thirds innings of scoreless relief without only one hit. Just the Yanks' seventh win in their last 24 games. And now we'll see if they can win two in a row. Hasn't happened since a four game win streak ended on June 12th. Oakland cooled off the Red Sox 5-2. The Orioles were shut out by the Cubs. 4-0. 60th win for the Phillies. 4-3 over the Dodgers. At Wimbledon, no Americans remain. Taylor Fritz was hoping to get to his first Grand Slam semifinal. He had upset Alex Zverev, and now Fritz was the favorite, but he lost in five sets to the Italian Lorenzo Musetti. He'll now play Novak Djokovic in the semis. Djokovic is 15 years older, and he'll be well-rested. Didn't have to play his quarterfinal match. Alex de Menor had to pull out with a hip injury. They'll play the women's semifinals today. In Las Vegas, first look at the U.S. Olympic basketball team in an 86-72 tune-up win over Canada. They're now off to Abu Dhabi for two more exhibition games. A change on the U.S. roster. Kawhi Leonard no longer on the squad, replaced by Derek White, joining his Celtic teammates Jason Tatum and Drew Holiday. There's news of the new NBA media deal. Reportedly, it will last 11 years. It'll bring in $76 billion. Copa America semifinals in Charlotte, Colombia. Top Uruguay 1-0. We'll play Argentina in the final. John Stash, Edward, Bloomberg Sports, Karen and Amy. Coast to Coast on Bloomberg Radio, nationwide on Sirius XM, and around the world on Bloomberg.com and the Bloomberg Business app. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. Good morning, I'm Amy Morris. President Biden continues to face mounting opposition within his own party as a Senate Democrat has now joined a growing number of House lawmakers in calling on Biden to step aside from the campaign. And that's not all. We're joined now by the founder of Pangea Policy, Terry Haynes. Terry, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. We know Vermont Senator Peter Welch has called for Biden to exit the race. He did that in an op-ed. But now we're hearing Axios is reporting that Senator Schumer, the Senate Majority Leader, may also be having some doubts. Good morning, Amy. Uh, you know, I'm going to, uh, to, to take issue a little bit with the uh, uh, with the premise. Uh, you know, there's uh, Biden certainly uh, under some pressure from the party, uh, but is he feeling a lot of pressure today? Uh, I doubt it. I mean, I'm sure they're all on full alert and all that, but I doubt he's feeling a lot of pressure from uh, from one senator and a handful of House members uh, uh, saying that he should go. Uh, the and, and a lot of the swirling around that's happening. I mean, you got a, a gentleman here who's uh, the president of the United States and the presumptive nominee of his party and has said a week ago he's not going anywhere. So this is not an easy task. It's not a quick task. It's not a clean task for Democrats. And they're doing this, frankly, at the worst possible time and in a way that calls into in their own credibility as a party. But the, the pressure is also coming from Hollywood. George Clooney, Rob Reiner and others. When you lose Hollywood, especially if you're a Democrat, that that's not good. Well, they've got some problems with uh, with fundraisers. But, uh, you know, I, I think the uh, <laughs> I want you to look at the, the how the White House might push back on that. It, it's, it's essentially I'm the leader of the free world and uh, a bunch of guys who thought I was great two weeks ago now want me to go. Well, you know, I've. You know, they'll get over this and I'll ride it out. And uh, Biden's given every indication he is going to ride it out for a while, for good or ill. What are you looking for from the Democratic National Convention next month? Uh, well, you know, it's interesting. The uh, my my view, uh, most recently expressed to clients last night, was that uh, they do they'd be better off uh, not worrying about uh, so much about this kind of dog chasing the fire truck uh, stuff that's going on with the uh, National Democrats right now, and look at what's likely to happen in the convention in two ways. One, this virtual convention that uh, that originally was supposed to be held for later this month to pre-nominate Biden and Harris, uh, if delegates aided and abetted by uh, 
by the National Party uh, want to stop that, they can do it. And uh, there are certainly lots of ways to stop Biden from being nominated at the real convention in August. And uh, I'd be looking at both of those, because if Democrats are serious uh, about about stopping Biden, that's where they go. And that's probably where they could apply the greatest amount of pressure on Biden. We've got about a minute left here, Terry. NATO leaders in D.C., how is this all bound to impact them? Well, you know, we're at a point where where we're already at the, high, at the highest geopolitical risk in over 50 years, and there was already bound to be increased U.S. political risk. Uh, it's, you know, in the middle of the NATO 75th anniversary celebration, uh, and at a time where they're ramping up security uh, inside and outside the region, uh, it's a bad look for the United States. Uh, it it uh, undermines Biden. Uh, it undermines the presidency. It undermines the United States' seriousness in the world and uh, leaves... leaves uh, NATO allies scratching their heads a little bit, frankly. You're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak Today, your morning brief on the stories making news from Wall Street to Washington and beyond. Look for us on your podcast feed at 6 a.m. Eastern each morning on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also listen live each morning starting at 5 a.m. Wall Street time on Bloomberg 1130 in New York, Bloomberg 991 in Washington. Bloomberg 1061 in Boston and Bloomberg 960 in San Francisco. Our flagship New York station is also available on your Amazon Alexa devices. Just say Alexa, play Bloomberg 1130. Plus, listen coast to coast on the Bloomberg Business app, Sirius XM Channel 119, the iHeartRadio app, and on Bloomberg.com. I'm Amy Morris. And I'm Karen Moscow. Join us again tomorrow morning for all the news you need to start your day right here on Bloomberg Daybreak.